Goss Island is brought to you by FNF Fashion at Tesco. Now, I love a good gawk in FNF when doing my Tesco shop at the weekend, and they've got some lovely bits in store to suit any occasion. I've recently bought some fab pieces myself and love how comfortable, stylish, and versatile their clobber is, especially in the warmer weather. Whether you're hosting a Love Island party or going on holidays, with availability in over 80 stores nationwide, FNF at Tesco has you covered this summer. Hello and welcome back to Goss Island. I have an amazing guest on with us this week. It's Donegal's second most famous man after Wee Daniel. Mm -hmm. It's TikTok sensation Eric Roberts. You couldn't just, you couldn't just give me that today. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Couldn't. You couldn't just give me that. You're competing with Daniel. Just I'm hard. forever on his heels, which is a bit of a torture, but one day... I'm yeah, gonna, yeah you'll get, get there as well. So come here, thanks. You've made the trip all the way down from Donegal. We were just chatting about it there. You drove down, especially for this. So we're honoured to have you here as well. I'm delighted to be here in the big city. Um, for anyone who does annoy you, which there mustn't, there mustn't be many now at this stage, anyone that's online, tell us a bit about yourself or how you... Um, well, as you say, I'm from Donegal, and I suppose I've only been in this kind of spectrum of online for the last couple of years. I was a special needs assistant for uh, seven or eight years, and I, I kind of thought that was going to be the be-all and end-all. It was my career job, and I very much so fell into this. I had no aspirations to do any sort of work online. I didn't really know what it was. I didn't know you could kind of have a career doing it. Um, so it's still, even to this day, very, very new to me, and I'm just really, really enjoying the process and stuff, and I've just recently gone like full-time showbiz, which yeah. is a scary leap. and was kind of emotional leaving that part of my life behind. But I suppose, who's to say I won't ever go back to it? And I'm still going to continue to work with children with disabilities and stuff as well. I've got loads of plans for the future with that. But um, I suppose, yeah, you kind of have to take the leap and see where it takes you. So I'm just, as I say, I'm enjoying the process now. Oh, big time. And like, I suppose I first came across you a few years ago. It was kind of around lockdown and just... I think it was it wasn't even on TikTok because it wasn't on TikTok at the stage it was on Insta but it was just like you doing a kind of a, a funny reel up home and kind of like it was like oh who's this lad he's funny and then you kind of grew steadily from there was it only lockdown that you started it was it? literally lockdown um, I was always I suppose I was always kind of the joker of the group and like the class clown or whatever it's kind of cliche to say but I, I was always considered like the funny lad in the group but I never I mean I'm from rural Donegal it's not kind of the social norm to be putting up videos of yourself and stuff do you know what I mean <laughs> nobody yeah, would yeah, do yeah. it but I was always kind of that outlandish lad that would do kind of things like this yeah. I mean I, I had a background in dancing as well which was like everyone's like, what are you doing? Like, do you know what I mean? But I, I always kind of had an interest in, I wouldn't say being different, but like doing what they're doing all over the world. But it's not, it's not really, yeah, exactly, like, yeah. yeah. But it just, it wasn't really the norm for up home. So when I started doing it, it was during lockdown and I was locked away and I didn't really have that fear of like meeting people and I mean like well, I seen you put up a video I was just locked away and I was just started mm -hmm. putting up this content and it kind of spiraled from there but I mean when I, when I started posting the TikToks on Instagram I think it was three weeks and I had 70,000 followers on Instagram so it was like very very quick Jeez, that's very quick and that's what I mean when I said I, I had no idea what it was and I like it, it, every day was kind of a school day when it came to growing online and seeing what you could get from it um, and as I say, it's been, it's been probably a year now really doing it properly and it's it's been just the best year ever. Just so many pinch yeah. me moments and so many opportunities and stuff. So I'm just excited to see what the next couple of years have in store now. It wasn't your first brush of fame now either. Was it Ireland's Got Talent that... We did, we did a couple of shows back yeah. in the day, yeah, with the dancing. Was it Britain's Got Talent as well? A show called Got To Dance on Sky One. Got To Dance, that's yeah. it, yeah. Very old show. <laughs> and uh, we did Ireland's Got Talent as well. And we, we had we had a good spell. I mean, we, we danced, myself and my mate, Vinnie McLaughlin, we danced for about six or seven years professionally, like up and, up, up and down the country doing weddings and nightclubs and stuff. It was a very fun time, but I mean... We got to the stage then we were like, we'll have to hang up the dancing shoes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're too long in the tooth. I just then. I do it now after a few rum and cokes. That's, yeah. a, that's about the height of it. So what kind of dance is it? Hip hop or the? Because I always see you doing the kind Basically, of like, yeah, yeah, I that can't move, do it now with the. That's the one. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the one. That's what really put us on the map. So what kind of style is? So it like hip hop and robotics and kind of animations and yeah. stuff. And I won't be doing any today. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> but did you like did you go to dance school for that or is it just something you found you were so in thing? rural Donegal with no neighbours and nothing to do and a, a, a wire internet connection I yeah. just used to watch YouTube videos and stuff and I was very very bored and I just taught myself how to dance and like, uh, that was it I was just yeah. sitting in the house self-taught and I again was like thinking this isn't going to go anywhere but then we applied for a couple of them shows and I think we were the most viewed clip on YouTube that year it's like half a million views or something and we just ended really? up getting loads of bookings we were like jesus we can do this and make a bit of money out of it so it was it was a very fun time 
Jesus, you're cute out from the get go. Oh, Jesus, yeah. no, you're no no joke, <laughs> as I said. <laughs> But I say then, like, what age were you when you were doing that? Were you able to kind of like get I was all the just shifts? Co- coming out of my teens, like, like yeah. coming out of my teens, and we were just we were going getting free drink in the nightclubs and doing a wee dance, and we were going to weddings, and yeah. do you know what I mean? It was just it was it was good crack. There was no kind of longevity with it, but it was again, it was just something you wouldn't see two Donegal lads doing. So we yeah. kind of enjoyed ourselves for a couple of years doing that, and then I knuckled down and got a real job. Yeah. So you've been kind of plugging away at it for a while, doing different bits. So you haven't really changed. You just happened to start putting stuff up online. You're probably doing those skits for the friends on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was, as I say, I had no aspirations or no desire to do anything like I'm doing now. And even coming into this year, I kind of said this year, I'll come into this year and be a yes man and just start saying yes to these things and getting offered like comedy and presenting and acting Mm. and just see where it can go. And it's just been going amazingly. So I'm I'm delighted. As I say, I'm just excited to see what else I can do before the end of the year. Yeah, because it's like the act of this was a lot of the stuff you do in the videos is acting or sketches in a way. So like, I'd love to see you actually in a play or in like you know in a TV show or something. I kind actually, of I did, di- I did a course recently with uh, Louise Keeley casting, and I thought to myself, I'll sign up for this. And uh, I, I had been doing a few ads anyway, and as you say, kind of not really realizing it, but I am acting. Yeah. But I, I signed up for this course and I got sent a script and the script was very serious. <laughs> so it doesn't really suit me, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was like, my wife had come home and I'm like, where have you been all night? Yeah. And they're like, mm, you're, you're gonna have to like, you need to be a bit more depressed. You've been alone in the house. And I'm like, where have you been all night? So <laughs> <laughs> they were like, mm, well, well, maybe we'll give him a funny script. So they gave me a funny one then and that suited me a bit more. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. I'm just excited to learn and kind of, when you're in your career job coming into your 30s, you're like, you're not really going to try new things. But what I've realized is it's it's amazing trying all these yeah. new things. You know what I mean? I did stand-up comedy a couple of weeks ago with the BBC in front of a couple of hundred people. Something I never in a million years thought I would do. And it was amazing. Did you cock yourself at all? The m- most terrified I've ever been in my life. Like hyperventilating before going on stage. Like I'd have to have a nappy going oh, on. It was, honest o- it was God, awful. Like, it's awful. Because it's one thing being funny in, within a group and all that. But then go up on stage then and re- like have to even be funny me, even it. making tiktoks and make hair and stuff if it's not going well right, i'll delete that and stuff yeah. like that there's there's no it's one take do you know what i mean on stage then, like, but it went well do you know you what got i mean? laughs i got you? a few yeah. laughs i got a few I laughs got more yeah. than a few i'd say did i you? got a lot of laughs no yeah. <laughs> no it was fun it was an amazing experience it's definitely something i would look into doing again but that's what i mean i'm just going to keep trying as many things as i can now yeah she's fair play to you like you know you're like you're really going for it and like you're i feel like you have to there, especially like. now that i've left work you kind of that's i'm motivated now to do as much as i can do you know what i mean i want to see where i can actually take it yeah. and keep pushing and it's it it's not i'm not going to say it's like it's it's easy work i'm doing because i'm enjoying it so much but yeah. it's like tough as well at the same time it takes a lot of time you're kind of flat out every day of the week but it's just so enjoyable i can't really look at it as work do you know what i yeah. mean yeah and like wh- how have you found kind of getting this new like fa- fandom or like followers like have you got any hate because there's obviously a lot of people love you and I suppose when you're putting out funny content it's great you get the laughs but like has there been a darker side to it at all I mean I I know there is a dark side to it but I've been extremely lucky in that I haven't really got that many hate comments and if I do it's more so I'm thinking well that's, this person can't be very happy themselves if, if they're going out of their way to comment on something do you know what I mean but as you say my content is very like family orientated and it's I just try and spread a bit of positivity without yeah. saying like a picking Egypt. Like it's just a, a light laugh. So if you don't enjoy me, you're probably just not going to follow me. But I, I can't imagine I would make anyone want to go out of their way and be like, this guy's a... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I try and I'm not political. I'm not controversial. It's just literally me and my own life. And most of my content is just me taking a piss into myself. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And people seem to enjoy that. So that's what I do mostly. Yeah. I have noticed as well, there's been a few a few cohort that... um are fans of your bulge on on TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. There seems to be a good few comments on that. I mean, like, I don't do know where f- this comes from, to be honest. <laughs> I don't I don't set out to post thirst traps per se. Well if you are a thirst trap you can't help it if just being you. I suppose you get, yeah. do you know that kind of way, like how can you not be I, you? I don't know. I do I don't spot these things before <laughs> posting them and then they're they're pointed out to me which listen. It's, it's flattering. I'll, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. Do you know what I mean? It's better to be getting it than not getting it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, how do you find that? Is that kind of... I mean, it's just, it's funny. Again, at the same time, it's it's not something I, I take too seriously and I, I would just laugh at it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. the same as anything else. But, <laughs> but it's kind of a nice thing to get. Of course, like, yeah. Someone saying, oh, where is it? Well, exactly, yeah. Do you know what There's I mean? Like, and, having to, yeah, and having to defend it. Yeah. No, listen, it's, it's, uh, it's their opinion. That's yeah. what I'll say. I'm yeah. not going around saying anything about it <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave that at yeah, that we'll <laughs> um come here obviously 
Love Island and I know you, you do watch it and you, I've seen you put up stories and, and all that. Would you go on Love Island? I know you're obviously, you're not single now and you're happily engaged. Congratulations as well much. on that. But if you were single, would you go on? It? I mean, years ago, if I was single, of course, but I, I think it's changed a lot. Um, obviously, it was like a golden ticket back in the day. I mean, mm. you, knew, you knew if you were going on it, people say they're going on it for love, but realistically, it's, it's an amazing business choice to go on that and it was kind of setting people up for life. And a lot of the biggest social media stars currently are coming from that show. Um, today, it, se- it seems like a bit of a minefield now. Like you, they're not letting people have their Instagram and stuff. And yeah. people, people are more understanding of how produced the show is almost. And they're almost replicas of each other coming on each year at this point. Do you know what I mean? But definitely years ago, I would have gone on it. But reality TV is scary. Like, you can paint whatever picture they want. I mean, if they want you to be the villain, you'll be the villain. If they want you to be the heartthrob, they can, like, do you know what I mean? It's all very much so in their hands. So it would be a constant thing in your head every day when you're waking up. Like, how am I looking here? Even if you are being your natural self. I mean, they kind of decide not to show. There's people on the show this year, and I was watching it last night. I was like, who's that fella? I know, they do don't you know get what much I mean? airtime. Yeah, exactly. So they can kind of pick and choose. And they might be having a great time in there and think they're on TV loads and then they're going to yeah. come out and be like, I wasn't even on the, the show. Like, So it's it's all very much so in their hands, which is what's scary to me about reality television. Yeah, it's like, I'd, like obviously, you say th- certain things or do certain things. That can't be edited, but like your airtime can be edited or like parts of a scene can be put before something else. Mm-hmm. So like a reaction seems different. So that's the scary part. You can only have so much control over your actions but yeah. the other bit around it exactly I mean, at the end of the day we're seeing an hour of 24 hours do you know what mm. i mean so they, it's it's entirely in their hands so i think i'd be terrified of, of how i'm looking and stuff like that there even if like you're being your genuine self and stuff one comment they might just show that mm. and then it's like right that's who he is yeah because once the public see a certain side of you that's their opinion of you then mm. that's that's what's so terrifying about that's it that's all they can go off really mm-hmm. like and what does your fiance make of it all? I mean, what I'm doing, yeah. um, she's extremely supportive. She's obviously in education as well, so she has no desire to be featured on the channel at mm. all. And it's it's almost annoying for me sometimes when I'm like, we're out and about, and I'm like, oh, let's put up a video. And she's like, no, absolutely not. Yeah, I'm wearing yeah. Adidas tracks bottoms. Don't yeah, dare yeah. take a photo of me. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? But uh, she's hugely supportive of what I'm doing, and she kind of sees the opportunities that I'm getting and stuff. So it's, it's exciting for her as well. We're actually talking about maybe moving to Dublin, just because yeah. a lot of the work up here is... It's, it's constantly up here and up and down, a lot of traveling and stuff. So we're toying with the idea. But even to be in a position where we can kind of do that is amazing. Yeah. So she's very, very happy and I am happy. And there's loads of fun staycations and holidays and stuff for her thrown in as well. So I suppose, <laughs> yeah, there's the, there's the parks, the, yeah. the freebies and events and things like that. Mm-hmm. And like, do you know what I mean? Like a lot of, um, what do you make of the whole, like the influencer? Because like that's seen, seen as a dirty word kind of mm-hmm. now nearly. Like what do you make of it? Like, and I mean, everyone that I've met so far, well, 95% of the people that I've met so far have been lovely. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, as I said, was very, very new to this. And I actually sent a message to the boss lady about two years ago. And I was like, this, so what is this crack? Like, I want to be involved in this. And I was like, you're doing great. Invite me to the next event. Do you know what mm. I mean? And we can still laugh and joke about it every time we see each other now. But yeah. I was like, I, was like I, I want in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to yeah. be one of these influencers. But when you start going to the events and stuff, you realize how small a world it actually is. Do mm. you know what I mean? You ca- Once you've gone to one event, you realize everyone's at the next one. Yeah. And it was kind of like we're new blood coming in. I suppose the TikTok generation you have the influencers that have been around for a decade and doing it for so long and then these tiktokers are coming up with like a couple of hundred thousand more followers than them and it's like where did you get all these and yeah, what's yeah, the, yeah. there is a bit of like almost animosity is there a bit there. of kind of like a there device, can be like yeah. i would imagine so but they as i said them, yeah. yeah as i said everyone that i spoke to is like genuinely nice and helpful and i'm very very close to like the likes of patty smith now who's ah, been yeah. doing it for years and like rob kenny and stuff and they like they t- really took me under their wing and gave me loads of advice about you need to kind of get into the PR side of things and not just have followers and yeah. really put yourself out there. So th- they're people I hugely respect. I mean, people who go out of their way when they don't have to, to give you advice and mm. help you out and stuff. So, so there's a lot of people like that in the industry. But again, there's probably some people who are just like, who the fuck is that? Have you met any dickheads? D- yeah, definitely. Uh, can you name names? Or you? Yeah, so there was them. No, <laughs> off the record. <laughs> we'll later, we'll get it uh, later. Off, off camera. Yeah, off, off camera. camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will actually ask you. <laughs> so how did you and your fiance meet? We met 16 years ago. 16? Um, yeah. So we were from the Child same area. Was, Child yeah. sweethearts. And we were kind of, we were on and off for a long time. She did her travel and I did my travel. But we were oh, just yeah. always kind of in, in constant conversation. And then about four years ago, we met up again. And we were like, oh, sure. We'll get back together and see how it goes. And now we're getting married. 
Jeez, that's lovely actually yeah. in a way like so you kind of like you have the history but then you're still able to kind of do your own bits absolutely i mean we ne- it was always kind of circumstantial that we weren't together do you know what i mean and we went off and enjoyed ourselves i did like all the seasons abroad and she was in australia and she taught in spain for a bit and we just always kind of kept in touch and then when it was kind of COVID hit and we were forced into the same area again that was just it and we kind of we always knew we were going to end up together and you got engaged was it a greece in a, on a yacht in santorini last year yeah <laughs> You've some notions for to be gone, man, don't you? I'm telling you. I don't know where I get these ideas. A yacht in Santorini, I love it. Like, geez, that's great. It like. was lovely, but we were actually dying hungover on the on the yacht. So I was kind of like, come on, get up, stand up there. I'll yeah, down yeah, one knee. Yeah. I was like, will you marry me? <laughs> on, on a boat to, beside this volcano. No, but it was lovely. It was a gorgeous setting. I'm yeah. delighted she said yes. So, Was there any fans that were a bit devastated? Or did you get any? I don't think so, no. Um, not, not that I know of, anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you got any mad propositions or anything off? Any? Oh, Jesus, yeah. Like off I any mean, what kind of stuff? Dirty boxers and socks and really? stuff that you could make a fortune off. I would say, but or oh, people wanting to buy your dirty job. Yeah, I mean, you get you. There's some headers out there, like yeah. You'd be thinking, I'd be, Jesus, if you want me socks, I'll give you my socks. But then you kind of realise, no, what, what do you want them for? Like, do you know what I mean? But I suppose once they buy them, they're theirs. To Listen, do what they do please. with what you will. And like, I don't how think much it's would they be offering you for the socks? I've been offered some silly money, but I just, it's like, are you being serious when they're offering this kind? Of, I've been offered a couple of grand. For like Way. underwear and stuff and like just would you not do private it? links or the OnlyFans messages are constant as well. well fair I actually enough, said to me only mother OnlyFans is one thing. I yeah. said to me mother last year about OnlyFans, she's like, Would you not do it? And I was like, Ah, but do you know what it is? Like Your mother like, said would you not do it? When she heard about the money involved, like she was like <laughs> She put up a couple of photos with your top off or something. I was like, I don't know. It might go That's the first now an Irish <laughs> mammy pushing I'm for the you, OnlyFans. Listen, if there's a few pound in it. I'm t- but like look, this aside now, would you not? OnlyFans is one thing you'd have to get your todger out probably to make the proper mm-hmm. money and then with kind of with your other work which you've done previously with special needs and your fiance's yeah. work maybe that might go against that might hinder me a bit would you not do the dirty jocks and the no, sly and no one need no like I don't think I don't think it fits my brand selling dirty <laughs> dirty boxers do you know no what I mean needs to know. family orientated <laughs> lovely guy sells his underwear online <laughs> I don't think it fits no I'm gonna I'm gonna stick in the straight and narrow I think <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We'll just see where that can take me. And then once the career's fizzling out, then revisit it, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe people want to d- jocks. And Neither can I, like, to be honest. But Jesus, it could be an easy bit of money. Would be, the wedding pay prob- for they itself. Prob- then, they would probably like, send them back once once they've received them and say, yeah. Jesus, no, Do you know what? You could I don't sell three these. jocks and then you could do an open bar at the wedding. <laughs> Do you know what? Think of it like that. <laughs> yeah. Wear nice them, to to wear them to GA train and then bang you're and swift You're on the temptation train now. You're <laughs> well, I'm not man. tempted, no. Do you well. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you writing to me off fake accounts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> my fin- still up for sale. That, that's my Finsta. I better delete it now. <laughs> Maybe you should sell them, Eric. I'm just saying. <laughs> Discount? <laughs> A discount code, yeah. Code Eric for Dirty Boxers. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So what have you been making on the latest drama in Love Island? Like, we had all the Casa Moore stuff. Like, my God. Like, it was really... It really delivered, in, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I think this has been one of the more entertaining Love Islands of the last couple of years. Um, you've got your main characters, I feel like, in Ty and Ella. And that was like... You've almost seen him grow up over, mm. the, over the course of the of the weeks. I mean, he was he was very much so like a fuckboy the first couple of episodes and stuff, <laughs> yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And the likes of Casa, I think he, his ego was so badly bruised, he kind of had a bit of a wake-up call, thinking like maybe he's not the top dick. Do you know what I mean? Mm. She's made a bit of a show of him here. You could see his ego was bruised. And you could tell he wanted her back, but he, he, he wanted her to work for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think he likes how much she likes him as well. It's like, you better finish with him. Do you want me back? And then she's like immediately breaking up mm. with him and getting back with him and stuff. He get, gets a bit of a buzz off. But you can tell he has matured a bit as well. And then you've got the really immature people in like Sammy and stuff who's like, Aww. it's like he's had a teenage just disco running about kissing everybody. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I like you. Let me give me a kiss. Do you know what I mean? The stuff you would do when you were 13. Yeah. So he's making a bit of a, a fucking Egypt of himself, I feel. I know. Like, I could, like, it's mad when like watching Ella and Casa obviously she, like and i understand why she went she knew uzi before and they were probably about to hook up if she hadn't got on it so there was history there they're both from scotland they had met on a modeling job so she definitely gravitated towards him and she picked him and i thought like oh look there's gonna they'll probably move on with the relationship now it'll all be great but when she came back in then it only seemed that she picked him because she thought ty was going to pick mm. someone else and it was like she was still mad on ties and she kind of dropped Uzi like a hot snot then. Yeah. Do you it know was that like, kind it was of like way? an immediate thing for, for her with Ty though. I feel like she like is head over heels with him like straight away and she's come back in, saw him stand there, she's like, Shit, what have I done? Yeah. Kind of thing. Like, I need to immediately get him back. 
But the, the, you have the funny characters then, like the like Mitch and stuff, who would like, <laughs> he's, I think he's tried to get on every girl in there, basically. Like, <laughs> and there's always one, every year there's one character. And there's just, he's, yeah. he's lucky to couple up. And then when he does, he's like a, a puppy dog. Like, mm. So I've had a good laugh at him. And then obviously Sammy and Mature. And then like, the rest of them, I don't know. I feel like some of them are just in there for the sake of being in there. Um, who, what, the, there's what the guy I mentioned, he hasn't been in it at all. I can't, couldn't even tell you his name, but I seen it. I was watching it last night, and I was like, who is that fellow there in the Montel, background? Is, is it Montel? With, yeah, he's with Leah. Do you know what I mean? You're thinking, if you're in there in the show, try and make the most of it. Surely there's some way, shape, or form he could do something to mix things up and stir the pot of it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like they get too complacent after Castle. Like, all the drama's yeah. done almost. But last night, as I said, was very entertaining. Yeah, see, Montel's a bit of, like, he's not that big a character. He's with Leah, who was a bit boring as well. She only kind of came alive last night yeah I actually want to talk about Scott and it's a good way of going into because Leah has been a bit of a quiet character and she kind of piped up and found her voice last night and she was kind of going at every lad and all the different situations and then kind of she was one of them and they're all talking about Scott and Scott kind of lit on her then and said where have you come from you haven't spoken in four Mm -hmm. fucking weeks and all this and then there was a big row over that but what I want to do is talk about Scott is like all the girls seem to hate him and are they seeing something we're not seeing? Because I feel like he's been kind of nearly half bullied in there between even with the lads saying he didn't really fancy Catherine, even though he still said loyal to her. And now the girls are all kind of like on his back, even though Catherine came back with someone else and he didn't. What do you make of it? Is there something we're not seeing? I mean, it just it falls back under the bracket of we're only seeing it out of the 24 mm. hours and we're seeing what they want us to see. But I think his ego was definitely bruised as well last night when, when they showed that clip and the girls were like, oh, you tried to get on everyone and you're coming back here acting as if you're Mr. Noble. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You were stood by yourself. She came back in a couple and you were kind of saying, oh, well, I stayed loyal. Well, did you really if you were flirting with everyone in there and mm. no one took you on? So that definitely, he didn't like that. Do you know what I mean? It's, when they're all sat amongst the lads, all the boys were being the boys and the girls were being the girls yeah. and they're kind of at each other like hyenas almost and they're defending each other. But Ty was probably one of the most mature in that situation where he was saying, listen, it's done, we'll forget about it. Whereas the rest of them were kind of going at each other and that's what makes movie night so entertaining. Yeah. But I think there's definitely something going on behind the scenes probably with Scott and the girls that we've missed and that they decided not to put in. Yeah, because Catherine's getting loads of hate on Twitter and I hate to see it for an Irish girl, but like, what annoyed me about what Catherine did is she obviously found someone with a better connection, and that's what all about. She coupled up with him and came back. But most people would be in, and kind of the body language would be down a bit. She'd be kind of, oh, sorry, sorry. Do you know, a tail between your legs. She came back in and kind of started biting back straight away, and um, which is fair enough. But if the shoe was on the other foot and he came back in and she wasn't coupled, and he'd be at public enemy number one. So there is a kind of double standard there, mm-hmm. I feel, with Scott and Catherine. And maybe there's something we're not seeing, and it'll probably all come out after the show when they start doing their interviews and saying, oh, he was a prick behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, that's when you get the juicy stuff when you come out and yeah. you're actually able to talk about it. But it's the same with Sammy last night when he was kind of laughing and he could see what he call her was upset. Oh, he's... Like, but how is Sammy not get... Like, Sammy, like, visibly more his behavior is worse mm-hmm. than Scott's and like he's getting kind of scot-free yeah, no one really gives him a hard the girls, time the girls, the girls are kind of giving him a pass almost yeah. and all the stuff he's been up to and it's been mental compared to everyone else like but poor old was, Jess I felt sorry for the yeah, creator she's had crying. a bad time of it like hasn't she yeah. and he was kind of giggling and stuff when all this was going on and she's watching him kiss other people and talk about how he's a better connection after a couple of days mm. so it was yeah it was, it was a hard watch for her definitely but again Scott's getting the brunt of it like which yeah. is strange so there's definitely something going on there and I know what he meant he was probably just filling your own mal with shy kind of just to kind of get her on side that yeah, he didn't actually a, having a flirt it. like he's yeah. going to say what she wants to hear really as uh, as any lad would so but he can't just apologize and say oh look i didn't mean that i'm sorry it's a hurtful thing to say he kind of he kind of has that mouth as well like cheshire cat he kind of even when he's not smiling he's kind of grinning in a sinister way yeah that's the way he can, can do no wrong no no wrong but um yeah so i don't know like will jess Jess and Sammy, they can never seem to kind of get it properly together. Like, but I still think she'll keep going back and back to him. Yeah, there's there's a couple like that every year, isn't there? Like Chris and Olivia years ago, where they were just constantly oh, arguing, stop. constantly falling out, and like the the iconic like sit down, I'm sat. That like that relationship, <laughs> like when they're constantly arguing, that's gonna. There's one of them every year, and that's gonna. They're gonna be gravitating towards each other, even though they give off the impression like no it's never going to work they're mm. constantly arguing it's just it's one of those relationships do you know what i mean they, lo- they love to hate each other yeah but um see i think now like who do you think is going to win oh, it's so hard to call it now at the minute like but i think people are really falling in love with ty and l's relationship yeah and if they can 
if they can be seen now to be quite close after all, like people love that rockiness and getting getting breaking up and like what he got million lame a couple mm. of years ago where he, he had the the hiccup in Casa and they ended up getting back together. People love that kind of story of like they've fallen out, they've gotten back. That's an epic love story. So I would say my money would be on them at the minute, but I'm sure it could all change within a couple of nights. Yeah, I think it'll be either El Tyreek, it could be Molly and Zach, or I think Mitch and Abby. Now I think people were hating Mitch ages ago, and now they love him. He's kind of yeah. Bit of an age. He has that funny persona that could carry him the whole way. Like, yeah. But, yeah, and like if they couple up, I think they're our top three. Um, but I think Zach and Molly, even though they're a good couple and they've kind of got back together, I think they're a little bit boring. There's no fireworks yeah. there. Like whereas we, I want Rouse. Even when she came back in, she could have gone in against him harder. Yeah. But he's laid back, Larry. He's just like, mm, do you know? Yeah. Like, See, you want that bit of controversy too, yeah. Mitch as well. And funny thing about Mitch's as well, I would say. If a couple more bombshells came in and gave Mitch the time of day, I'd say his head could be easily turned as well. Yeah. Because he had so long in there where just no one was giving him anything. So the first girl that did, he was like, oh my God, I'm in love. Yeah. So if someone else came in and kind of fed his ego a bit as well, I would say his head could be easily mm. turned. I don't know if they'd last on the outside. She's a bit posh, isn't she? Like, yeah. For kind of, and he's more the kind of the, the chappy plumber mm-hmm. or gas electric man or whatever he works at so I can't really see them like outside because she's more of a made in Chelsea type yeah but people saying she was no Prince Harry when she was young yeah like they used to ride horses ride outside horse. and stuff yeah so like now all of a sudden she's on I doubt her parents are loving her on Love Island no I can't imagine Mitch is like a bring home boy is he <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> you're right yeah but um yeah so I think there that's probably our final three I have a feeling Katie is gone out of there because like the rumours of her having a a A boyfriend yeah I mean is there any kind of like she's gone in there and she's really disappointed and Mm. and, like when you're thinking of like a bombshell coming in to really mix things up she's just gone in and she's just kind of there and it's Mm. almost like she's only done it to further their career on the outside she hasn't really done anything hasn't made an effort with anyone so yeah, she's been a big disappointment, I think. Yeah, like, I think she did what she needed to do coming in and causing that star Molly going home. I think the producers have done really well to kind of, like, change things up, but I think they should have got more involved in Molly's return because that was a bit like a, a damp squid yeah. at this stage. It kind of she was like, oh, you're back, okay. Yeah, and then, like... like it wasn't really as entertaining as it could have been. Like, no, and the kind of passive-aggressive thing yeah. between her and Kate. I don't know, it just kind of... It could have been better, and then the recoupling, there was only major thing was your one tink was that her name tink was it yeah <laughs> and, uh, montel the girl that montel was shifting and did the heavy pet yeah under the, under the blankets mm-hmm. there's always that moment where they have that where like oh they recouple and your one yeah. is there with a sore face and like well i thought i was gonna be yeah it wasn't exactly gone. pg yeah was it? it wasn't telling me and yeah. all this like you know, there's always there's always that moment that was that one big moment because like between that and then Ella coming mm-hmm. back in with Uzi where Tyreek was just yeah fuming. We just we want more controversy when we're watching. Like we want there to be a big blow up. So like when everyone kind of knew that Ella was bringing back Uzi and everyone went, everyone was like so excited to see it. it was such dramatic television, but there was no real big blow ups. No. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for now. I want rouse. I want physical altercations. Hit like, someone. Yeah. I want someone thrown out. Like <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? Will we ever get that again? Islander shot in dramatic <laughs> finale. <laughs> Stop. <would you> <laughs> Um, so if you were in there now, who would your type be? Obviously, you're not single, we know that, but yeah, aside sure. from your fiance, because that's obviously your most Yeah, your I mean, all the girls are obviously very, very attractive, so it would just be, as cliche as it sounds, a case of who I think I'd get on well with and mm. who I'd have the crack with and stuff. So um, probably Ella. I think Ella's very, very attractive. And I don't, uh, Katie, again, is a very looking girl as well, but I don't think I could hold a conversation with her. No, Do you'd you know have to I mean? crack with Ella because she's Scottish. Yeah, as well, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. I love the Scottish accent, yeah. accent as well. So, yeah, I would say so. You're not going to ask me who my type is. So. Um, I'll stab a guess. Let me see. <laughs> no, I would say you'd be a Sammy man, would you? Oh Jesus! No. Yeah. Well, say you'd, like you'd be saying, do you need another kiss to yeah. see if you like me? <laughs> but I was fair as on the night out. I probably wouldn't. I'd shift all of them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, in fairness, like they're all very good looking. But probably be Tyreek or Mitch. Mm-hmm. They'd be mine. I fair, think. Yeah. Yeah. fair, yeah, fair analysis. I think yeah. Here, the, listen, the Crocs, Mitch wearing the Crocs is is, is a plus for yeah. me. You're a Croc man too, I aren't you? I am a big you? Croc man. Well, yeah, I am. Comfort myself, is key. I love comfort a good strong color sock with mm-hmm. the different color Croc. Absolutely. But kind of they go well with each other. Like, yeah. you know? A sock up to the knee. Oh, right <laughs> up there, like yeah. I actually. It's almost like a stocking at that <laughs> stage, isn't it? 
<laughs> my terrible thing I put up my Instagram there when I was on holidays because I always wear the high socks and I'm, I'm always wearing shorts I've tanned legs but then just until kind of halfway up my ankle and my feet are like <laughs> alabaster white <laughs> It's terrible. <laughs> so I was trying to do you have that because you're always with the socks on as well. I mean, I'm I'm careful when I'm out there. It's more my travel fit would be a socks and sandals or socks yeah, and yeah. crocs kind of vibe. But then when I'm there, I'm very much barefoot. Like oh, I you're barefoot, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, yeah, so selling the socks won't really come into yeah, them. I'm kind of evenly really tanned everywhere. You're not wearing them enough to kind of get. <laughs> no, I'm not that much of an advocate. <laughs> They'd be for just it. new, like yeah. Oh. I'm a part-time sock wearer, bandwagoner. <laughs> um, what what's next for Eric Roberts? Yeah, well, after? this this year has been mental like crazy and I, i'm constantly saying it and i'm people are probably sick hearing it but like i feel like i'm in such a privileged position like I've, every day is like i've won the lottery getting to do mm. all this stuff and travel and meet these people and um, i've actually been given an amazing opportunity in the last couple of weeks that i i, I said i would announce today so this is our tonight isn't it so yeah. i've been invited by jd to the women's world cup in australia oh, to wow. host the games which is just mind-blowing to me do you know what i mean to be traveling just to australia with a brand that i've worked with for a couple of years and, and that's get, work that's work like how do you call that work so I, it's it's just incredible and then i have some really exciting stuff happening later in the year which i can't talk about yet i hate being one of those people like i can't tell you yet mm. but it's going to be happening later in the year and well i'm sure you give goss the exclusive won't I you will when the when <laughs> <laughs> i have to i have told i have yeah, told, yeah. I've told probably more people than i should have told ali's yeah. under <laughs> nda no, <don't> <laughs> No, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a huge year, um, and th that aside as well, some more exciting offers as well on the table. Um, again, radio and TV and stuff. So we'll see, we'll see yeah. what happens. But uh, the next couple of weeks is gonna be incredible. Obviously, with the Australia trip, and then I'm getting married then a couple of weeks after that. So it's all. So go, what date? Or not exact date, but what we want to end of married. August. End, end of, of August, August, we're getting married. Yeah. Jeez, it's not we'll long coming around. I suppose, yeah, you had your stag. And I'll be, I'll be in Australia still planning it and making phone calls and stuff. So there's still a mountain of stuff to do. But Are you doing a lot of the planning or is it half and half? Uh, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done, but w when you get closer, you realise there's still loads of stuff to do, small stuff. So mm. that's kind of, that's where we are now. But Neve's done a lot of the planning. For yeah. the heavy are you a bit of a groomzilla? I'm ha absolutely not. I think I've picked the suit <laughs> and I've organised to lift the suits. That's a... a yeah, the extent of my planning, that's yeah, that's yeah. been it. Do you know what I mean? That's what I've been allowed to, but I only did that last week. So I'd say the first wedding well. dance will be good. I don't think I'd we've say. nothing mad planned. I mean, it depends how many pints I have beforehand. <laughs> I'll be like, DJ, <laughs> run it back. <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll try and keep it as romantic as we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit of robotics at the end, yeah, maybe. Just yeah. at the end, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see. <laughs> Come here, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. You've been Thanks a for great guest. Thanks and for having me. Um, we're looking forward to seeing what's more to come of you as well. We'll definitely Absolutely. know. We'll see you more. Sure, we'll be on back the, on now. The small the screen and the big screen, hopefully, yeah, as well. We'll see. We'll see. And you're doing a great job. Oh, by thanks the way. very Fantastic much. Fantastic job. It's all, all about you, Eric, yeah. is it? No. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Goss Island is brought to you by FNF Fashion at Tesco. Now, I love a good gawk in FNF when doing my Tesco shop at the weekend. And they've got some lovely bits in store to suit any occasion. I've recently bought some fab pieces myself and love how comfortable, stylish and versatile their clobber is, especially in the warmer weather. Whether you're hosting a Love Island party or going on holidays, with availability in over 80 stores nationwide, FNF at Tesco has you covered this summer.